All right. Uh, we're back. Episode episode 92, correct? Yeah. All right, cool. I did actually look that up earlier. Like like most most things in this next uh, you know, the nineties. Uh, much like the nineteen nineties, very defensive lineman heavy. Michael Strahan, Reggie White, uh, James Harrison was ninety two. Oh another athletic marvel. I like James Harrison. Yeah. He's a yeah. patriot all timer, but great great athlete. Speaking of that, I a think freak. Albert Hainsworth might have been ninety two. Hainsworth was in the nineties, I'm pretty sure. Definitely. He sucked. Boy, oh boy, he might be the worst one. Like those big <laughs> name free agent signings that just stink. <laughs> I, I think that was for the number of minutes that he was intending on lasting with the team. I was going to say, I don't think he made it out of training camp. <laughs> Seriously. I don't think he made it to the regular season roster. And if he, he did, lasted he longer than Reggie Wayne. Oh God, that's right. That was another <laughs> bad one, dude. Like we made, we kind of like teased, like poke fun at Ocho in his Patriots tenure last time. He arguably had a way better Patriots resume than those guys. Oh yeah, Reggie Wayne. Reggie Wayne. I didn't expect much. Yeah, that was like yeah. an end of the, whatever. Albert Hainsworth was a big free agent signing or a yep. trade. I don't remember what it was. No pun intended. A very big off, big acquisition. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he was so fat. He's stopped. very big lineman. Yeah, James Harrison was he a mid season acquisition or was he off season? I think he was mid season. I do too. Yep. I think he strictly came here as like a fuck the Steelers move. And then I think we beat the Steelers in the playoffs that year. Yeah, and I, I think he's like more team Patriots, even in his like post-playing career, that, that like he still fucked the Steelers. Big time. I think I thought he retired as a Steeler. Like did one of those one day like things. Maybe he did. So I could have sworn that like a quote came out where it was like, wait, I figured that like whatever beef you had with them was over, but yeah, I don't know. Whatever. Um What's I, beef? I'm not a big in the fan. words of Biggie. Yeah, great question. Uh, I'm not a big fan of those one day signing to retire as a fill in the blank team. It just never made sense to me. Like Brett Favre did it. I think Pierce did it actually. I think Harrison did it. Are you a I big think fan? I'm going of- to do that with uh, Margarita's Mexican restaurant whenever I, you know, whenever I decide to hang it up for good. That's a very good point. Like when you get inducted into the beer hall of fame, like mm-hmm. what, what cap are you going to wear? <laughs> no cap intended. What cap are you going to wear on your, your, your bust? Oh, well, I was just going to say, like, because like, that was my first job. Oh, yeah. So I, I may sign a one day oh, with, with margaritas. Man. and just That's a good one. We should, we should do a segment on that sometime soon, like our, our first job. You talked about that, me in the grocery store, you at margaritas. And I believe you in the grocery store as well, right? <laughs> that's a great I think, story. I think you're one of the only few people who knows that story. But that, yeah. that might be a, a fun report story, actually, if yeah. we're lucky enough to be back on. <laughs> Um, damn, that's a good story. <laughs> yeah, I'll, but we'll I'll save that. Surprised you remember that. I, I I'm surprised I randomly just thought of that. Uh, let's do this. Let's get right into it. So it's just us tonight. So if you're planning on, you know, throwing your phone out the window, now's probably the best time to do it. I was gonna uh, say, go ahead and skip yeah. to the next episode. <laughs> if not, uh, thanks for coming back. If this is your first time here, um, thank you for checking this out. I don't know mm-hmm. where you found us, but make sure you, you know rate review subscribe whatever that whole thing is um, glad, glad to have you stay a while um i'm glad to have take, you take your shoes off put, prop Please. your feet up light light up a smoke yeah. if you'd like <laughs> that's a great uh not a dad joke but not even a boomer thing just a great saying hey take your jacket off and stay a while <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> great saying have I've, you ever I've, noticed i've, I've heard you... it multiple times yeah myself it, if you go somewhere and you don't take your jacket off at someone's house, like they always say that you have to, I mean, eventually enough cold. time passes. Oh, it, the jackets are relevant. Like the, the reason for the jackets are relevant. If you're in my <laughs> house, take your shoes off, take your jacket off. Stay a while. Hey, those socks look a little uncomfortable too. pop those fuckers off. When you're here, you're family. <laughs> speaking of restaurants, yeah, speaking uh, of restaurants, <laughs> My two favorite slogans of all time. When you hear your family's a good one, shout at Olive Garden. Mm-hmm. And I might have to change this one up. Better pizza, better ingredients, Papa John's. God. That guy's in some hot water yeah. today. Or however long this fucking thing is. 
Uh, great things, great story circular, circulating around Twitter today is Papa John's <laughs> interview on OAN of all places. My favorite, extremely low controversial news network of all time where I get all my news. What does that stand for again? Um, I assume that, <laughs> I certainly shouldn't assume this, but I've always thought the N stands for news. <laughs> uh, the O and the A, I have no idea. Um, quite frankly, I have no, no idea. Uh, I, I'd, I'd like it to remain that way. The less I know, the better. Yeah. I think it's just a pretty conservative right-wing news network. Mm-hmm. I'm not sure which channel it airs on or like where they find their employees. <laughs> I think it only exists in like Twitter clips that go viral for controversial things. Have you ever heard Ben Shapiro speak? I know he's not on there. Big time. Think. Yeah. Uh, maybe he is on there. What a squid, like regardless of who you're oh, with. Yeah. I, if that I, guy's I, on my team, fuck it. I'm on the other team. Yeah, I um, <laughs> I don't like Ben Shapiro, but I do enjoy listening to him in interviews just because it's like, it's entertaining, to say the least. And he has a very entertaining voice. Squid's a good way to put it. Mm-hmm. He's been on Rogan a couple times. I, I know he has his own show, obviously. I just don't care to tune in. But uh, yeah, I, there's like a few guys in media. Like Ben Shapiro, I guess, is one. Aubrey Huff is one. Clay Travis is one where it's like, if I believe something, I'm, I'm like 99.9% sure I could go on Twitter and see them post the polar opposite. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like something I feel is true or like I care about. So um, anyway, let's, uh, that was kind of a weird side tangent. Just, just go on Twitter and type in Papa John or any of the guys we just mentioned. And it's pretty fun day. Should, should we like in one sentence, explain it? Go for it. Okay. All I'm going to say is Papa John. And this wasn't planned at all. This is not on our agenda. No, this so was not. In correct the list us if notes. we miss anything or whatever, but go ahead. We are, we are a current events show. Um, <laughs> it, we are a big racial slur current events show. So that's where this came mm-hmm. in. And we're he, a big pizza show. So where else? what else should we talk about? Yeah. What uh, go ahead. Correct me if I'm wrong. I don't think he's like the, he doesn't own like the majority of Pop John's anymore, right? I think he took a step down somewhat okay. recently. I think Peyton <laughs> okay, Manning's actually the this. majority owner. Of Papa yeah. John's at this point. So basically, he got in trouble like a year or two ago uh, mm-hmm. because it came out that he was using the N word and racial slurs, which is already awful enough sure. and it's like such an obvious thing. But the reason he was a story today was because he's being interviewed on OAN, mm-hmm. and I think they were asking him how how he's been and almost like an update on his whatever rehab or how he's trying to fix himself. And he said that um, over the past twenty months that it's been. Mm-hmm. He's been working hard at trying to remove that word from his vocabulary. So do that what yeah. you will. He's the man's been working very hard he, to eliminate he's talk, this one word. He's talking about his N-word rehab like people talk about their babies. There's only two things you count by the month, babies and Papa John's racial slur rehab apparently. Cuz if you if you know it down to the month, that means like you know this is like a, a big deal. Like this is something I will give him credit here. He is proactively working on eliminating this word from his he said his vocabulary and his dictionary it's just it shouldn't yeah. take 20 months i don't know no I, I i i remember i was a young boy once i was probably in like fourth or fifth grade i learned what the word was i learned what it meant and i learned how it's you know how it's taken in society it probably took me a solid 10 seconds to realize i should just probably not say this word nor would i want to yeah, it's and not I was a gradual progression. It's yes or no whether no. you use it. It's not like, yeah, we've been monitoring his usage and like nine times out of ten, he's pretty good. But he's pretty you get good. him on that like on one bad day. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's gonna slip up a little bit. I can picture him going to like like an AA meeting, getting like his his month twenty chip of not saying the N-word <laughs> <laughs> and like just going back and talking about it. It's coming. Do you know what his real I last name it. is? No, I, I saw it. I saw it. I, I don't remember, but I saw it on Twitter. Something very, I don't know, white and Italian, I assume. I'm not going to look it up and I'm going to be corrected, but I, I yep. could have sworn it's like shatter or schnatter. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. <laughs> yep. That's exactly what it's similar to. Something like that. Yeah, I don't know. I, I don't know. I mean, I, I, I think I've said this on the airways before. I like Papa John's pizza. Me too. Um, which stinks because now it's like, you know, removing the artist from the art. Mm-hmm. I like R. Kelly's music. I like, uh, I don't know. I thought OJ had a hell of a spin move 
but it's just sometimes you got to you got to separate it. Great and acting. You have to give too. things you like. Some people underrated. got in late on on OJ. Underrated acting career. Underrated. I'm not going to say like rehab, like he's a good person now because he's still a piece of shit, but his PR team has their pedal to the metal for the past handful of years. Yeah, he somehow turned into like, I wouldn't say likable. No, entertaining. Character, yeah. Very (laughs) pro-vaccine. Yeah, where the murder thing has become like a punchline. (laughs) Nah, it's old news. Thing of the past. (laughs) Somehow we live in a world where OJ good, Dr. Seuss books bad. And that's just where we live. And then Papa John just comes in and gives us whole new, whole new, uh, whole new chapter to dive into. But anyway, in peace to Pepe Le Pew too. Oh, he's dead. He he's either dead or on death's door. If you haven't seen that one coming, like come on, bro. Like it's yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, he's a skunk who would proactively seek out women, and he wouldn't take no for an answer. No, he was forced. Whether that's right or wrong. So anyway, um. Speaking of Pepe Le Pew, let's transition into our show. Um, let's talk a little All-Star. NBA All-Star weekend over this past weekend. I know we, we probably each have a couple notes. I don't know. I mean, I, uh, I was actually, I don't know if, even if impressed is the right word, but I did find myself watching it, and I found myself having a good time. I think probably following it on Twitter made it a little better, but uh, I'll let you go first. What were some of your, your notes and takeaways from All-Star weekend? I thought the game was decent. Um, mm-hmm. Me too. It, it was fine. Like, I feel like the the number of dunks has gone down, which I think I said on a previous episode is one of the things that I look forward to. And, yeah, and that's mostly because like guys are firing from everywhere, which we saw in the game. Quite literally half court. I thought it was funny, and I'm I'm surprised that it hasn't been a story. Yeah. That LeBron pretty much like sandbagged the whole way. Like, mm-hmm. whenever he got the ball and tried to dunk it or something. On a scale of one to ten, he gave like a two in effort. I think he missed yeah. at least one or two dunks. It looked like, like yeah, they already don't care because um, it's a, an exhibition game. But it, most of the time, they're at least kind of having fun. And he was yeah. just like, yeah, I really don't want to be here because all the stuff before the game between him and James Harden in like the yeah. week or so, saying that you know they didn't want to be there, the NBA forced them to do it, which is fine. Um, I, I think the NBA did a good job of. I, I would assume it's it's their PR just like, yeah, we're not going to bring this up that LeBron didn't play in the second half at all, which mm. it's not uncommon for them to sit out a lot, but for an entire half, that yeah, was kind of crazy. Um, and he, he hardly LeBron. played in the first half. Like you're the captain. Yeah. Like your name is on the product. Yeah. I, I, I guess I agree with that. Um, I mean, just, it didn't hit me to like the intros in the beginning, like team LeBron was so much better. Team Durant. Oh my God. Stunk. Durant wasn't even there. Like it was not, I'm surprised it was that close. I said, I thought it was going to be 20 plus team LeBron. I think they won by 20. Um, that team was stacked and, uh, and yeah, it was fun. I mean, I watched the first half. I actually watched it and then I probably went to bed like a little bit into the dunk contest and then just watch highlights today of the second half. doesn't look like I missed much. I think the best, the best part I thought was um, the, the Dame and Steph, half court shots back to back was pretty cool yeah because that's like something you know if it was like i don't know i'm trying to think of like if two guys had a rivalry and they did dunks back to back that's different like you have to like hitting a half court shot is challenging Mm -hmm. (laughs) and that couldn't have played out better that was sick uh the dunk contest i don't know i know you have some thoughts there i'm not going to go too into it i think it's like if, if we're relying on three guys you know two of which being people no one's ever heard of. And then Obi, <laughs> I would say Obi is probably the most well-known guy just because he was a pro, high-profile rookie. I don't remember the kid. The kid, the kid on the Blazers won, right? Yeah. Anthony, uh, what's his name? Simmons? Simons. Yep. Simons, excuse me. And then Cassius Stanley, great name. Uh, shout out Tyler, fire name alert. <laughs> Cassius Stanley, big time. <laughs> I thought Obi's first dunk was dope. I thought... Um, I did think Cassius Stanley's dunk was great too, but I've been saying this for years. It's like, eventually you're going to run out, literally run out of things to do. I think mm. we're almost there, but now that we don't, I know I'll let you address that later. Interesting. <laughs> also, now that we have no names doing it, it's like, I don't know. I, I'd be okay if they nixed it. It yeah. just left it at what it was. This was a thing of the past. It was really cool for a while. 
and maybe even just like watch maybe at the at the minimum it's a it's an excuse to watch old dunk contest highlights at the all-star break you know trending on twitter and stuff like that um here are my thoughts from the game i had two two big ones Eh, maybe just one actually a question i'll pose to you because i saw this circulating the internet too and it's in regards to the jerseys um i i would say the all-star game jerseys this year were kind of trash i didn't really think they were very great but there's been some people talking about bringing back the old format when you wear your actual jersey of your actual team and as long as one team wears home whites and one wears away colors i don't see where it'd be an issue i think that would be cool i'd be okay for that but i think a cool uh kind of homage to the old time when they last doing that was you wear throwbacks like you wear the 90s throwbacks or whenever whenever even the last time that was like when was the last time they did it like that early 2000s if not late 90s where they just wore their own jerseys Uh uh-huh yeah, I'm trying to think. Because, like, um, what was that all-star year when they wore, like, the like the teal, like, cac- not cactus. Um, you know what I'm talking about? Like, the Jordan. Oh, The yeah. teal home and away. The 96. <laughs> and those were those were team uniforms. Yeah. Like, everyone wore the same uniform. But yeah. I don't think they went back and forth. So, so maybe it was mid-90s. Unless late 2000s, they brought it back for a little bit. So there's at least um, one in a couple instances in the early 2000s because you know how like there there's that highlight that circulates a lot about the probably the best All Star game where it's like Kobe Marbury and Iverson went back and forth. So yep. that was 01. Okay. Um, and then I think they did that again in 02. Mm-hmm. I know 03 was Jordan's last All Star game. That's where Kobe blocked them. And and in yep. that one they definitely went back to like red on one side and and white yes. on the other. Those were good too though actually. I yeah, I don't – I feel like that may have been the last time because okay. I definitely can't picture it since then. So I think it's something to do. It's an excuse to bring back the throwbacks, you know, like the old school, like Raptors, the Hawks, the Bucks. Like that would look sick. Like Giannis in the old bu- – like green and purple Bucks jersey Ooh. with like the deer on it. Uh, I don't even know if there were any Toronto All-Stars this year. Celtics, I guess, would it matter. Like the old Lakers, old Rockets, uh, which I guess doesn't matter anymore actually. Who else? The old Warriors would look sick. Uh, the old Pacers. The Nets. Oh, perfect. Like the Nets with like the blue and white. Oh, yeah. Like Nets jerseys. Those would be dope. LeBron. Well, I already said Lakers. Uh, Dame and like one of the old like Clyde Drexler Blazers jerseys. Like that would be fun. That would be yep. a cool excuse to bring those back. Because again, I think similar, not quite like the dunk contest, but similar. You're going to run out of ideas for all-star team jerseys. Like, if this is the best we can do in 2021, it's like, these stink. But I did see someone bring up a good point. I think it was Dragonfly brought up the fact that, was this game supposed to be in Indiana originally? Yeah. I think that kind of makes sense. They were a throwback to, like, the Pacers, mm-hmm. like old school Miller series, which makes sense. It just makes zero sense having the game in Atlanta. It looks <laughs> stupid. I so, have an idea, like a slight that, tweak really of this. Note. Mm-hmm. What if they... Shirts so, and skins? Uh, I wouldn't mind that. I, the next thing I was going to say was uh, like clear jerseys and clear shorts for everyone. But mm. <laughs> um, it, if kind of like the Indiana uh, motto or like whatever mm. strategy, yeah, yeah. where wh- whichever yeah. city that you're playing in, let's say they play in Boston, you kind of do yep. that. So you just take green and white, but you yep. make, um, I'm trying to think here. So you would go, white for one team but then but then the green team you go white and green but they would mm-hmm. be like white and green all-star design jerseys yeah yeah so it's like kind of like a, a combination of the two yeah that'd be cool that'd be cool i'd kind of like tie the city back to it for all-star weekend too once we get back into that hopefully next year um spreading these things out but no i mean it is what it is uh do you like new format for the all-star games the scoring format it's fine yeah I it like is, that it's it has... a close game. It's a blowout. It doesn't really matter. Yeah. But <laughs> that's that. <laughs> have you ever played, uh, I know you said shirts and skins. Have you ever played mm. uh, skirts and, and uh, smoking Things? jackets? No, not personally. I know oh. plenty of people who have. Plenty of people. Yeah. Well, you went, to, you went to North? Yeah, correct. Yeah, okay. So that's why. Mm-hmm. Yep. Uh, what else? <laughs> So I guess we'll transition into this. I have some thoughts here. I'll let you. I'll let you talk about your uh, 
all-star takeaways after. I know you had some thoughts on the dunk contest, but I don't want to miss out on this. So another one of the best parts about all-star weekend was certain people on Twitter. I know Tyler did it. I think some other people did resurfacing the idea or the belief, or maybe just the fact that Kawhi Leonard's family has no idea what he does for a living. (laughs) Very limited information. From that Decent clip, hypothesis. yeah, from that clip of some weekend, I don't know when it was. His daughter basically like, and, and again, I don't want to go into it because Howard does a great job. But like, in a nutshell, like, why, like, what are these clothes you wear with like the cutoff shirts and the Spurs logo on it, or Raptors logo? And it just reminded me, like, Kawhi Leonard is. I think we talked about him before. Like, yeah, he's under, he's a little more entertaining now. I guess he's out in LA because we, I guess we see more of him, but. I feel like I know nothing about Kawhi Leonard and I think he loves it. Yeah. That way. Yeah. I think that was last year. I think mm-hmm. so. Like, the, yeah, uh, it was pretty recent. The picture that was happening was he, it was either the, just the post game pictures after the all-star game, or maybe he won the MVP of the game. I and think so they did. were taking pictures of him with his family and his yeah, daughter sure. looks up at him and was like, why are you always wearing those clothes? By the way, <laughs> you know, your Jersey and your shorts. Yeah, and no he, idea. He, plays he just kind of like shoes her away. Like, don't don't nah. worry about it. No, nah, nah. nah. yeah, daddy's just <laughs> on business right now. <laughs> the best things going around was I don't know if it was now or just randomly before, but comparing it to like Tony Soprano, like keeping his state business <laughs> out of sight, out of mind from his family. Like, nah, you ask it. Starting to ask too many questions in the Leonard household is pretty much what it comes down to. Yeah, I'm not here. I work nights. Sometimes I travel. You know, I was relocated to Canada for a year, came back with some hardware to remember it. And now, long story short, we're moving to California. Yeah, I, to school. I, I won a couple uh, year-long contests, so yeah. that's why I have this trophy. And uh, don't worry about it because I'm still providing for us. And, yeah. you know, that's why you get to go to the nice school and yeah. eat all this good food. So don't worry about Daddy, it. Daddy works hard. I get summers off to spend the time with you when you're out of school. But between fall and, like, late May – I'm working. I'm unavailable. Mm-hmm. And I let's keep it that way. The less yeah. you know, the better. He does. I mean, he works a very dangerous profession. Sometimes it's like the less, you know, you see it in like gangster movies all the time. It's like, I don't want this life for my kids. That's why I work so hard at what I do. Yeah. That's the Kawhi Leonard story. Pretty much. <laughs> but I, I put something out there on Twitter, I think this weekend or last time. And it's like, when I think of Kawhi, it's like, I know there's things out there that Kawhi, I think I worded it like things Kawhi is very good at that. He a doesn't want anyone to know and B like is low key, very good at, but I was thinking, I think the list I put together is more things like Kawhi just genuinely likes to do that. I can see him genuinely liking to do. Um, I had five. Did you come up with anything? I, I got a few, I got three or four. I'll let you go first if you want. So the one that I put on Twitter was, Unless you want me to shirts. go first. I can see him be very good at that. Like he has a fur, his hands are freakishly large. Big time. Those photos are great. Like him, not I, like not shaking hands with normal people, shaking hands with NBA basketball players still looks yeah. freaky. Have you been to the basketball hall of fame? No, never. Oh, wow. I haven't been since I was little, but they have this thing where it's like, it'll be like a basketball, but with like the imprints of certain players hands on it, dude, it's, it's bizarre. Like it's scary. Like it was like Tim Duncan, Shaq, like Kareem, Bill Russell. Like they just don't look like they are attached to a real person. How did, I think how did you, some of the biggest up there? How did you line up against uh, Rasho Nesterovich's mitt? His his famous left hand, embarrassingly small. <laughs> I was per usual, but <laughs> but go go ahead. So let's talk a little Kawhi. Yeah, I I, I could see him being good at ironing shirts. Yep. I feel like. Um, I, I I don't know. I, I can picture him standing over like the ironing board and, you know, either trying to keep anyone from disturbing him or he's just mm-hmm. like in his bedroom alone. And it's like, I got 20 shirts that I got to knock out really quick yep. Um, yep. for these business trips. And mm-hmm. let me get, let me get done with this. I'm not going to rush. Um, I'm not flashy with the iron, but I'm pretty damn I know effective. What I'm doing. And yeah. efficient. I can see be very efficient, like knock it, out like five or 10, High quality Oxford dress shirts in ten minutes tops. Yeah, he he's like the mid range. He's got the mid range game of ironing. He does. Very underappreciated, and people are like, 
Well, who still does that? But Kawhi's like, no. Kawhi does it. It's still works for me. Now they think back like during actual like post-game pressers. Off the top of my head, I don't recall seeing a wrinkle in Kawhi Leonard's shirt. Mm -mm. Take that as you will. Um, The next one that I had, did you want me to go again? Please. Sure. I said uh, removing corn husks from like an ear of corn before boiling it. I guarantee he's like pretty, again, huge hands. Yeah. So he could like peel back an entire ear of corn in like what, like one stroke. Mm -hmm. Um, Probably multiple. He could probably hold four or five corn husks at a time with one hand. Yeah. And then almost like taking a fish off the bone in a cartoon, (laughs) just reach down, yank him off, toss him behind his head, throw him in the pot. And it's a it's a Leonard family cookout within minutes. Well, that was the Way second more part. efficient than how I could do it. I, I could picture him putting it into the pot, and most of the time, people have to be like really careful that they don't drop it in, so that the hot water doesn't splatter yep. on them. And Kawhi's like, mm-hmm. "Well, that's not an issue because my arms are ten feet long, also, so I can just drop this in, and I'm still standing on the other side of the kitchen." Yeah. So. Yeah. Very Grinch like. Like the Grinch had those long, like skinny fingers. Yeah. Big time. You know what I mean? Like the Grinch could like, there's a classic cover of the movie, him holding an ornament just always looks strange to me, but very quiet. Yeah, it looks like mittens rather than fingers. Looks very weird, but quiet is very weird. So is the Grinch. Last one, I had um, matching Tupperware lids to containers. Oh, that's such a hidden skill. Yeah. That's and a I highly know, sought after skill. That I, I know he's have. got that. I know he's got that. And I bet he doesn't like to admit it. But I assume when his no. family leaves for like, I don't know, when they're like, we've had enough of this fucking robot yeah. that lives with us. Like, yeah. we need an escape. Kawhi's yeah. like, yeah, Loves me too. Oh, finally, some me time. <laughs> Kick back and relax. <laughs> yeah, that's a, that's a, that's a sought after skill. Um, that's tough to come by. Like, if you filter, if you're doing like a, if you're hiring on like Indeed or LinkedIn and you filter the skills you're looking for, not many hits when you filter by matching Tupperware lids to the appropriate body myself included i stink at it and when you're on the opposite end of that when you're the person looking for the person that has that skill like yeah i am looking for a tupperware matcher on craigslist Mm -hmm. yeah you can find pretty much damn near anything that you want on craigslist and that is not one of the things not one of them no certainly not i I would pay big money to see like a Kawhi leonard mtv cribs episode a to see how he is and B like to see how this guy really lives. Cause I get pictures of us being like immaculate, like to your point, like a little, like creepily, like too immaculate. Like I think American his closet psycho would be like Doug funnies. Yeah. <laughs> Nothing but Clippers jerseys <laughs> and like a white shirt with a black tie and matching pants. Yeah. Like multiple <laughs> of them home Different. away city edition in suits and yeah. like a nice pair of pajamas button up pajamas and then also somehow he has like a i don't know assorted voice boxes or assorted like comments mm-hmm. that he can make throughout the day um so it's like yeah very limited pre- pre-programmed vocab vocabulary mm-hmm. yep it's quite leonard so going through mine i just realized they kind of range from simple <laughs> from like simple to a little more specific into like oddly specific. So again, mine are more like things I just think he genuinely enjoys that we would never know and is good at. The first one, um, Connect Four, the board game. Very simple, run-of-the-mill game. Doesn't take a ton of skill. Doesn't really register a lot of fun. I think that's like the optimal board game for Kawhi Leonard. You're going to be in and out in 10 minutes. Yep. Share a few laughs. Have some strategy there. And I think he would just whoop on his kids and connect four and call it a game, call it a day rather. Yeah. That that's like a, about as much fun as he would want to have. It's like peak. Like if you're looking at like a bell curve, like that's yeah. the top of it. Um, next binging a world war two documentary series on the history channel on a Saturday afternoon, like just in his living room on his lazy boy. I could see him enjoying that quite a bit. Maybe mm. And I'm not going to say have a drink, but maybe have like a sugar-free frozen yogurt dish or something like that. Yeah. A la like Tony Soprano and like his boxers and a wife beater, <laughs> just watching a old World War II documentary. Uh, next on my list, slightly more specific, mowing the lawn 
and then we're admiring it from his deck while sipping exactly one Michelob Ultra beer, 12 ounce, not the 16 ounce, yeah, and just yeah. doing a handful of deep breath, just <clears throat> satisfied with his day's work. Yeah, looking approvingly at his own work. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah, I did that. Yep. Uh, two more. Next one. <clears throat> <laughs> walking downstairs to his family in the living room to say, I think I'm going to go catch a movie while throwing on a jacket and a baseball hat, driving into the city with no particular film in mind, only say to the kid working at the booth, hmm, that one looks interesting. One ticket, please. <laughs> and then enjoying a movie by himself. Yeah. You think That's he like laughs? an optimal Saturday afternoon for Kawhi. Oh, yeah. Depends what kind of movie he sees. I don't think he is interested in a comedy. Not, I'd hate to be around. Speed. I'd hate to see a, a comedy with him. I think his laugh would throw me the fuck off. Yeah, I I think something very vanilla, not like so boring where it's like an indie like art flick. I could see him going to choose to seeing the poster for like, I don't know. I was gonna say Doctor Doolittle too, but that might be a little too funny. <laughs> um, I was about to say National Treasure for some reason, but that's too adventurous too. One of the sequels to National Treasure mm-hmm. without seeing the first. And then I'll add on top of this one, him asking, hey, this one looks pretty good. You think I would need to see the first one to understand it? And then the kid just saying, I, I probably not. I don't know. And then him saying, ah, time to live like the other side. I'll take one and just, you know, have an afternoon. Last one. <clears throat> Making extremely, and I can't stress this enough, extremely small, small talk with the customer in front of him in the line at the grocery store while he's simply there buying a carton of milk, but the person in front of him has a full cart. After said person offers to Kawhi Kawhi to go in front of him, since he only has one quick item, Kawhi replies, that's okay, I'm in no rush. And then making small talk from there. I think that's like like going to like Studio 54 in the (laughs) 70s for Kawhi Leonard. Yeah. Yeah, and you and I are used to know, putting on and our forth like, disco shirts and going out, and yeah. this is the equivalent for him. Yeah, anything, and it also depends. Like, I could also see Kawhi being very good at like predicting how long this conversation is going to take based on how many items are in that guy's cart in front of him. So if it's like, you oh, know, yeah. go ahead, I can't see this lasting more than maybe three or four questions. Hey, aren't you that guy from that team? Yeah, yeah, that's me. Uh, or hey, aren't you that guy from that New Balance commercial? Yeah, 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 that's me. Um, hey, aren't you that guy? You know, you get the picture. So I don't know. That That's that's the list I put together. If we're missing any, please hit us in the comments. Reach out to our DMs. But uh, Kawhi Leonard is an underrated, extremely entertaining person. I was going to say maybe, maybe he's the type of guy that enjoys going for like a nice, quiet drive by himself. But then to take it a step further, he'd probably just end up driving circles around his own neighborhood and be like, this is really nice. This is pretty cool. That's like yeah. Fast and the Furious 12 for Kawhi Leonard. And the, <laughs> the window's like stroll. not all the way down. It's cracked a little bit. Well, yeah, it's Southern California for Christ's little, sakes. Yeah, a little fresh air and never hurt anyone. But Yeah. Um, so that's that. Let's transition to our last segment of the night. You, uh, you, had, you were featured on a very prominent podcast recently. Um, tell us how that went. And then... I'd like to hear the question that you asked on said podcast. Mm. So, oh, wait, quick dunk Please. contest. Go ahead. Floor is yours for the last 10, 15 minutes. Okay. So I had a suggestion for a couple of suggestions for the dunk contest where I actually think that it's getting to the point where it's possible that maybe there are more dunks to be done because guys are like throwing different oops to themselves and, and like, like the bounce. But I mean, they have to be the most athletic people to pull these off. So that's why you on one hand, so. like, yeah, there are some dunks left, but you got to be mm. the cream of the crop. But like Obi Toppin's dunk, like the the self-bounce alley-oop through the legs, yeah. mm-hmm. like that's pretty crazy. I, we definitely didn't see that 10 years ago. Yeah. But I was thinking um, I have a couple changes to make. So number one – in order to make sure that you do have the most athletic people um, to be able to pull these off. Yeah. I think everyone who does a dunk contest should be required to be on steroids. Mm-hmm. Cause I think it's pretty much like the, it's mm-hmm. pretty much like the home run contest in baseball. So you want these guys to have the best advantage possible. 
to put everyone on steroids. That yep. way, these guys can just do absurd, like, video game type dunks. Because, like, that one, um, what else was the, the Cassius Winston dunk? Was wait, Cassius Winston, Cassius Stanley, Stanley. Okay, his dunk was another one that we, we, uh, unless you like go on YouTube and just look up dunkers who aren't yep. NBA players, that was pretty sick too. Mm-hmm. So, everyone's got to gotta use steroids. Um, Everyone has to choose a rival to jump over and contest the dunk. So if LeBron decides to do the dunk contest, then Steph's in it with him too. Mm. And LeBron gets to either dunk on him or jump over him. Um, I'd mm. like to see either one. And and yeah. it's a it's a no holds barred. So like you can't go out of your way to hurt someone, but there's no offensive fouls being called in this. So if you just want to posterize the guy, <laughs> like by all means, it's free reign. Yeah. Um, I'd be those okay are the easy that. rules. Those are the easy yeah. changes uh, to really step it up a little bit. The lowest score of each round has mm-hmm. to remove a piece of clothing. Yep. I'd consider that an upgrade. Yeah. That's up in the ante a little bit. The lowest score, no, that's the lowest score of the first round. The lowest score of the second round has to show their DMs on live TV. Mm. And so we can see who they've been hitting up. Oh, yeah, sure. That, that's interesting because that plays some strategy into who is in the dunk contest too. Yeah. <laughs> Could be a not great dunker, but some great DMer. Great DMer. Yeah. <laughs> Good idea. Okay with it. The last one, um, the second place finisher, so the runner up, um, has to eat a basketball live on TV. In its entirety? Mm-hmm. No utensils. We don't want to be that guy. Mm-mm. I just think those are some things that you can use to, to raise the stakes a little bit. Yes. Um, I feel like that would that would motivate people to do some great dunks, but no one would give a shit because they would just care about seeing the penalty for whoever loses. <laughs> so yes, you'd rather see okay the penalties that. than the dunks. Hundred percent. Particular penalty in mind. Bad. Definitely the basketball okay. eating of it in its entire consumption. A lot of pressure. I'd like, I'd like to see the DMs of like. Yeah, me too. For some reason, those. Kelly Olynyk was in the dunk contest. What the hell he's yeah. working with? We see those all the time, though. We see yeah, that's true. I, I, I've, I've seen more DM screenshots on Twitter than NBA players eating a basketball on Twitter. <laughs> so have it that with what you will. All right. So that that was it for the dunk contest. Um, okay. In terms of my appearance, Tyler, yes. I am. Yes. Shout out to the goat. Uh, sure. Yeah, I just posted a question, which. I'm very interested to see what your opinion of this is because we haven't mm-hmm. talked about it. You know what my opinion is. Mm-hmm. Um, and shout out to Lang Daddy Kane, Justin Lang, mm-hmm. who told me that uh, this question had made it onto Tyler's show, which yeah. was if you're in a bathroom, if you have to go to a public bathroom, yeah. you have no options, um, and you're faced with either they have the perforated toilet seat paper sure. or yeah. the actual toilet paper itself or using neither of those things and just raw dog it bare ass on the toilet seat. Yeah. What do you do? Um, no, nah, this is a good question. I, I, I think most places don't have the actual product that's made to put on the toilet seat. That's kind of like an upper high end type of establishment. I would yeah, assume Papa most, John's. correct. I would assume most public bathrooms do have toilet paper. Mm-hmm. Um, so you can go with that. So I'll, I'll usually go with that. I mean, have I sat on a toilet before without without it? I have. Not proud of it. It's happened. I think most people have. But it actually made me think, I guess, I don't know, what's your question? What I do and what I think most people do? Yeah, both of those things. Okay. So yeah, I, I tend to just go with the toilet paper. I mean, if they have something that's already made to do it, that's much easier. I just feel like that's very rare. And I'll say this. I mean, I really haven't been on a public toilet in 
quite some time, probably close to a year, to be honest with you. Mm -hmm. So I think it's, if you're, if you're doing this now, not that I think that's a high transmission opportunity for COVID or anything like that, but it's like after everything we've been through with a hyper focus on germs and hygiene, if you're doing that now, that's like crazy. Um, you're just asking for, if at the minimum, some bad karma to come mm -hmm. and no pun intended, bite you right in the butt. So it also made me think about this though. And I do think most people probably choose the middle option. They choose toilet paper. Um, made me think of just like house, like your household in general. Like if you grew up in a house of five or six people, maybe you have two toilets, maybe three, if you're lucky, that's still five or six like butts being cross contaminated on like a daily basis. Yeah. Like who cares if it's your family? Like what's it? I guess, you know, they're not like super gross. Cause I guess the, the thing about public toilet is it's just a numbers game. You know, you mm -hmm. don't know who sat on there that you're going to happen to get next. It's still just kind of a gross thing. Even my house, like it's me, my wife, and that's it for now until my son finally gets his shit together and learns how to use the toilet. Um, mm -hmm. But we have three toilets in our house and I, I use all three interchangeably. I really do. Like we have the one in our bedroom. I use the one downstairs from downstairs and use that one. And then I work out of our guest room and we have a guest bathroom connected to the guest bathroom. So I use that one just as much. So there's been a lot just in this household, a lot of back and forth. So I don't know, maybe, maybe those become a household thing now, I guess, after the pandemic, like I said, with this hyper focus on hygiene and taking the precautions maybe they start selling those retail. If not, we should start maybe selling Morse code pos podcast branded toilet seat covers uh, for your house. Can't hmm. You'd be surprised at what the, idea. what the response was on um, Tyler's community group chat. Oh, I didn't see that. Yeah. Um, so that's what, that's what spawned it. Cause I asked it in there and yep. people were quick to be like, yeah, you, you think that just laying down, um, paper is going to stop the transmission of germs just in general like covid aside but germs in general i was like yeah i get that but i'd, what I'd do they do? i'll still take the measure the one measure that i yeah. can as opposed to none sure. at all and so a lot oh, of so they just say nothing nothing at all a lot of people were, not were bare backing it, it. And I, yeah. like i said i mean i've done it before i i'm trying to think bro i've been in a public bathroom in a while like it probably depends where i am if it's like a nasty place I'll make sure I make the effort to do it again to those guys point, even if it doesn't make a big difference, I don't know. I'm taking a precaution. Yeah. Uh, it's very similar to another movement we've been seeing in the last year or so. <laughs> exactly. About opting to use certain precautions. Is it the end all be all? Probably not, but is it a simple precaution to take? Yes. So I'm going to do it. Maybe they should make toilet seat mandates. That It's also the same idea as like, even if there, let's say there's no effect of it whatsoever, mm -hmm. I would rather just not come in direct contact with the toilet seat to begin yeah, with. It can't hurt. So that that to me is already gross. That to me is no different than when you're done washing your hands and then you yeah. go to open the door. Like I never actually grab the door. I I pull my sleeve down, or yep. I've I've still got the paper towel, and that's how I mm. exit the bathroom. But yeah, right. but these people were fucking savages. Like yeah, hmm. saying that I was crazy, nah, and then not. um um yeah they're, they're just saying, saying that, that to make themselves feel better that's nothing on you yeah you're doing what you can i will say this though it's like fast forward maybe a year or two from now hopefully like we're done with this mask debate i mean boomers are going to need something to argue about on facebook under various like radio station facebook pages and town of fill in the blank pages maybe it's become like a public bathroom mandate well, you like found it. paper towels yeah here it is you know, it's like my body, my choice. I'm not doing this. Um, and then some people are going to choose to do it. And that'll fill that void, hopefully. So the other thing that a lot of people were saying was, was the same thing, which is that um, for the most part, like they avoid public bathrooms, which I do too. But oh yeah, obviously I try that, to. But that's the premise of the question, though, is that you don't have the choice. So if you have to. And uh, a lot of people are saying, like, if if I'm in a situation where I absolutely need to use the toilet in public, mm -hmm. uh, then I probably don't have time to like lay this down. And I was like, it takes like an extra 20 it seconds. Literally, it's not, oh God, it takes literally five seconds. Yeah. It's not difficult. Too long. Yeah. And um, also the reason that this question came to mind was because at work, when we were still in the offices, ours did have the perforated things. Yeah. I think mine did too. 
So I, I always laid it down. Yeah, those are uh, nice. And I wouldn't even, dude, I wouldn't even, if I saw like a drop of piss on a toilet seat and I mm. needed to take a shit, I'd always just be like, nope, next one. Oh, wow. Yeah. Even knowing that I could wipe it with, uh, ooh. Yeah, you never know. That's a good mm-hmm. question. Yeah. So, so, okay. So let's say you're in that situation where you see a couple drops um, yep. uh, around the rim mm-hmm. and you do have the perforated stuff. Will you just lay down the toilet paper or will you take some paper wipe off the drops that way you're not sitting on like wet paper yeah i would probably if they're like visible drops i would wipe those off okay why not i have a feeling those fucking heathens in the chat wouldn't probably not they'd probably just who knows probably they're probably those kids who are like licking toilet seats like to do like the corona test back to get high yeah i do (laughs) (laughs) or eventually once people get back into their office it just becomes a bring your own toilet seat type of thing you have your own toilet seat. It's just a click and detach. You put it in your briefcase to and from work every day. <laughs> Ooh, and if you now don't bring one, you're not allowed to use it. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> it's like the tra- like the uh, um, vaccination and passports. That Absolutely. They do. Sorry. Again, no pun intended. Shit out of luck. <laughs> Sorry, buddy. Yeah, this no is up to the business. Um, no ticky, no laundry. They can say whatever they want, but this is a private decision. So if you want to work here and, and shit, or even like the guests, like patrons. Like if you go to Walmart and you think there's an off chance you might have to take a, use the restroom, you should probably bring a toilet seat. Yeah. If not, it's just going to be another one of those like Karen videos going viral, like complaining to the store owner. But at the end of the day, they have the final say. Have I told you about the time I shit in someone's yard? Yes, but let's save that. Yeah, I, I was going to say, we'll save that. That's another. That's a nice little segue into next week, next episode. Um <laughs> With that being said, I think I think I think we should get going here. But overall, a lot of important stuff hit on today. Mm-hmm. So, um, looking into the future, Thursday we're going to talk some football. We've got a returning guest. Yep. And then uh, we'll see what's going on next time. We're getting right into the second half of the NBA schedule. NFL free agency is opening. Uh, some trade rumors are starting to heat up. Dak signed a deal today. We didn't really talk about that, but that's good news. Good for him. Uh, the Cowboys like had to make that deal. Like you just look like an a hole if you don't pay Dak Prescott. <laughs> yeah, last year. That's like that's like the Kobe deal. That's a, that's like an earned legacy deal. Yeah, like you're. I don't even think he's being overpaid for it, but it's like you can't not sign Dak Prescott to at least a two year deal. I think he got four actually. Um, I think he's actually overpaid, but it doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah, you just have to kind of save face and give him that contract. I think it was like four for one sixty or something like that. Like it was, it was pretty substantial. I didn't see the numbers, but is he um, is he going to be good to go for like the start of training camp? I don't know. I would think so. Uh, what do we got here? Let me get the numbers <laughs> on that puppy. No, yeah. What am I saying? All he did was tur- uh, roll his ankle a little bit, or pull his Very calf. Low whatever. Key. Tony I actually Romo think said. they brought Tony Romo in for the final, <laughs> final negotiations. I think they had him read the final X-ray. Yeah. Four year, 160 million, including a record 126 million guaranteed. Fuck, wow. that's a lot of money, dude. Damn. <laughs> For a borderline, I don't know if he was a Pro Bowl quarterback coming off of a pretty gruesome injury. That's a lot of guaranteed money. I wasn't expecting Yikes. that. Good for him. I didn't I didn't see that guaranteed number. That's a big one. Uh, but in the grand scheme of things, I think Patrick Mahomes was close to like five hundred million. So <laughs> Maybe he's underpaid. I don't know. But if you're Dak Prescott, you have to take that deal. No one else is that stupid to give him that kind of money. No. I don't care if the Cowboys stink. Like, for the next 20 years, you have to take that deal. Um, Maybe we'll talk about that more on Thursday with our guest. Uh, For everyone else, thanks for watching. And uh, we'll see you guys next time. Peace. Peace.